Why, hello there, everybody, and welcome back to the GSL English podcast. My name is, of course, Gideon, and I hope you have all had a fantastic week, wherever you are or whatever you've been doing. Now, for those that are watching on YouTube, let's initially talk about the elephant in the room. Yes, I am outside. So for those that are listening to this podcast, to those faithful audio lovers, I'm actually recording this podcast outside today. I thought I would try something a little bit different. I actually started recording in my office and I thought, you know what? It's a lovely day outside. So I'm going to record out there. Now, this is either going to work quite nicely or it's not going to work at all. And the audio quality is going to be terrible. You can't see me. And this was a complete waste of time but I'm going to commit to it. Now, just as I have started, the wind has picked up, but now that I have set everything up outside, I'm certainly not going to repeat that process again inside. So we're, we're stuck outside. So if the audio quality is not that good, I very much apologize, but if it is good, then great. And welcome to my garden. Now, you will also notice that I am wearing sunglasses. Now, this isn't to try and look cool, because I don't think I've ever looked cool in my life. It's actually because I have something in my right eye that is a condition, I think it's called keratoconus. And it means that basically I'm very sensitive to bright lights. And today is a lovely, sunny day. So I have to wear my sunglasses. Sometimes even because of this condition, I actually have to wear my sunglasses indoors. So I look like a right loser. But there you go. There are the two kind of elephants in the room for this podcast. Yes, I'm outside. And two, I'm not wearing sunglasses to try and look cool. I'm wearing sunglasses because I have to. But I guess looking cool is just a benefit of that. <laughs> I'm only joking. I don't look cool. But yeah, it got me thinking, you know, recording this podcast outside. England changes in the summer. Now, I don't want to jump ahead of myself. I don't want to get ahead and get too excited. But in April, we're having some nice weather. Things seem to be going well. And England really does change in the summer. It's a different country from season to season. So technically, we're still in spring. But I'm treating today like it is a summer's day because British people, we, we live in rainy conditions. Generally, when it's cold, when it's rubbish outside, we have a whole winter of it. So any time that we get and it's sunny, it's nice outside, we exploit that. And you'll even see it today. You know, it's going to be a nice weekend. I'm actually recording this podcast on a Saturday, which is a little bit late for me. But I've had a busy week. And even if you drive around this weekend or walk around, you will smell barbecues. You will hear music in the gardens and in people's in people's gardens and in the pubs. Excuse me. And it's just a different kind of atmosphere in summer in England. And I love it. I mean, I love traveling. I love visiting new places. I think it's a brilliant thing to have the opportunity to travel. But in my opinion, my humble opinion. You can't beat England on a nice summer's day. I just love it. People are great. Country's great. You just get this kind of feeling, you know, this atmosphere, which to me can't really be beaten. I really enjoy it. And then that, in turn, got me thinking about the theme of this week's podcast, which is how much the weather affects our mood. I don't know if you've noticed that or it's something that you've ever really thought about, but the weather really does change our mood or collectively it often changes a certain culture's mood or a country's mood doesn't it it's such a big part of our lives so in today's podcast we're going to read an article from the BBC quite an old article but it is an interesting one and it dives into why and how the weather affects and changes our mood so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to look at some vocabulary as we go through that article. But mainly, this podcast is just designed for you to be able to listen to the English language 
in a nice and natural way. So if you are new here, that is the purpose of this podcast, just to be able to immerse yourself within the English language in a, in a relaxed way by listening to me chat about a variety of different topics. Next week, we are going to have another guest joining us, which I'll probably announce on Instagram on Monday. Very excited to record with this guest. So we will have some more conversations coming up. I'm going to try and alternate it a bit more. So you have some weekends where it's just me, um, some sorry, some weeks with a podcast where it's just me, and other weeks where you have where we have guests and have a conversation together. So I'm going to try and alternate it a little bit. I apologise if that sentence didn't make any sense. My cat started attacking my foot as I was talking. I'm starting to realise that there's a lot of distractions <laughs> recording a podcast outside. So, yeah, we'll see how this one goes. And my cat being one of those big distractions as it keeps attacking my foot. So, yeah. So let's get into what we are essentially going to be talking about. So let's get into what we are ultimately going to be discussing today, and that is the connection between the weather and our mood. So as I said earlier, we're going to do that by looking at a BBC article together. So you can read along on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. If not, just listen along and enjoy. So let's get into it. We're going to read bit by bit and just see what we can take from it, what vocabulary we can learn. But as we go through, try and really listen with the intent of understanding and trying to get the whole meaning of the article that we are reading. Because of course, that is the purpose of this podcast is to assist you in your listening skills. So let's get into it. The poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow said some days must be dark and dreary. But does our mood have to match? So many words we use to describe the human condition are linked to weather, like having a sunny personality or a tempestuous streak. You can probably think of a whole playlist of songs that use weather to describe emotions. But how much does the weather truly affect our mood? The answer may surprise you. So it's very interesting, that first statement. And it is true, isn't it, that a lot of how we would describe human emotion are, are linked to weather. For example, if somebody has a sunny personality, you know, they're a happy person, they're bright, they're bubbly. But then it also talks about having a tempestuous personality, which is, you know, having a strong or turbulent or conflicting emotion, meaning that, you know, you're quite argumentative or quite stroppy or, you know, tempestuous, quite aggressive, like to argue. But, you know, and we often describe that to talk about the weather. So we can often link adjectives that we use to describe emotion to the weather. Very interesting. And isn't it true that we often have music even that goes along with the weather and in turn connects to our emotions. I have playlists that I like to um, put on when the sun's out. You have playlists that you put on when it's a rainy day and you're feeling a little bit more like you want to stay inside, maybe a little bit more sullen. Or, you know, if you're driving round and the sun's out, you've got more of an upbeat playlist because your emotions go along with that. And it's very true, isn't it? Weather does affect our emotion and it is often used in a way to, to describe how we are feeling. But is it true that the weather does affect our emotions, our mood or how we are feeling? Well, let's continue. Is it a stormy mood or dark skies? Not to be confused with seasonal affective disorder, SAD, a very real type of depression brought on by the amount of light we are exposed to, the scientific link between weather and mood is still pretty grey. So the article, you know, puts it out there at the beginning that there is a disorder that called seasonal affective disorder where our mood and our temperament is affected by the weather. And this is a real thing. It can cause depression, stress and anxiety. 
So at the outset, you know, it acknowledges that, that some people do suffer from this. But, you know, just for in general terms, generally speaking, is there a link between weather and mood? Well, it says that it's still pretty grey. If we describe something as being a grey area, we're not too sure. Now, I don't know if you can hear that in the background of the video that's just turned on. Or sorry, not on the video, but background of the audio. The ice cream van music has come on. Can you hear that? I've just completely lost my train of thought because I got really excited as I think the ice cream van is coming up my road. But I will miss the ice cream van to keep this podcast going for you lovely people. But it's completely thrown me off my train of thought. <laughs> so just as a heads up, I don't know whether you've ever visited England or, you, you know, or you're used to that sound. But when you hear that sound, which I hope you did, if not, it's often like an old nursery rhyme or something like that, a piece of music. It basically means that the ice cream van is out and he'll come up and down the roads in your local village selling you ice cream. So that's the first one I've heard this year. And that has got me really excited for summer. Huh. That's interesting. It's lifted my mood. Wow. It's almost like that was scripted, but it wasn't. But OK, back to the point. If something is, you know, it describes the link between weather and mood being pretty grey, meaning it's a grey area. You know, there's not a definitive answer, so to speak. You know, we, we don't know definitely, but let's read on. Physical, mental and behavioural changes can be observed over a 24-hour cycle. This is, this is what's referred to as a circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythms regulate our sleep. So, if the cycle is disrupted by changes in light, things can start to feel pretty out of sync. It's very normal to feel a touch of winter blues in the colder seasons. So it's true, isn't it, that we do live on a 24-hour cycle. And it says here that that is our circadian rhythm, our circadian rhythm. And this is something that recurs naturally on a 24-hour cycle. That is the circadian rhythm. It, you know, it regulates, as it says, our sleep and the way we do things. But of course, if we have a change of light, that can affect our circadian rhythm and then it mentions here that that puts us out of sync, meaning our brain and our physical movements and our emotions are not lined up. You know, they are not in sync. So it says here it's very normal to feel out of touch, out to feel a touch of winter blues in the colder seasons. So it's very normal to feel a touch of winter blues. Winter blues is just that feeling that you have when winter comes around, you've got those grey, dark, rainy days and you just feel a little bit low, blue. You know, we think of the music, the blues. It's often talking about problems in life. You're feeling a bit down. Well, that is sometimes how we feel in winter. And it's because our circadian rhythm is, is out of sync. You know, we're not lined up and that is what makes us feel a little bit down. So those physical, mental and behavioural changes aren't lining up in the way that we would normally expect. About 2 million people, just under 3% in the UK, are diagnosed with SAD. That's that seasonal affective disorder. But it's suspected to be a lot more common in its milder forms. It's no surprise a rainy day might put you off going outside. But it's still important to get some natural light, as this exposes us to UV rays, which can help to regulate your circadian rhythm. So wrap up warm and see how a little time in nature boosts your mood. Very interesting there that, you know, just under 3% three percent in the UK are diagnosed um, with this disorder. But I guess to some level, we all feel it, don't we? And, you know, how do you feel on a rainy day? You don't have the same energy you do on a sunny day. I think we can all agree with that. On a rainy day, generally speaking, we don't want to go outside. We just want to wrap up. We want to stay in and just stay cosy, stay safe and stay warm. But in turn, that affects our natural 24-hour cycle. That affects the circadian rhythm. So it gives the suggestion here that to keep that 
sink, that circadian sink going, it's important to get some natural light, to get those UV rays. So I guess that is what we are lacking in winter that gives us those winter blues, you know, those na natural lights, those UV rays. So it says here, you know, you need to wrap up warm. And if we wrap up, that means to put on clothes that will keep us warm, you know, to wrap up, to put on quite a few layers and try and get outside. I don't know about you, but that is something I try to do throughout winter rather than just staying indoors, especially because my work is indoors. It's very easy for me to not go outside for days, <laughs> but that's not good for you. As it says here, that is what kind of, you know, encourages those winter blues, that feeling of being down and not having a lot of energy. So, you know, get outside, get that natural light, even on those rainy days. So, OK, I think we can all agree that, you know, those rainy days do affect our mood. It does make us feel a little bit more blue than it would perhaps on a sunny day. So let's carry on reading. So what's the deal with the weather? It's hard to measure. Mood can be affected by so many factors. However, there are things related to the weather which definitely seem to change the way we feel. This can include humidity, sunshine, temperature, wind, barometric pressure, precipitation and sky cover. I always find that word really difficult to say. Precipitation. <laughs> precipitation, which is the amount of rain. So it is true, isn't it? There are so many factors within weather that we, you know, we have to consider because all of these affect the way we feel. Humidity. You know, if you've ever been to a really humid country or perhaps you live in one, you know, it can be really difficult. I used to live in the Dominican Republic, as many as of you know, and often an extremely humid day was worse than a really sunny day. It was so difficult. It just felt so close, the weather, and you were just dripping with sweat. So humidity is the amount of water vapour in the atmosphere. And that is what creates that really close temperature. But, you know, that combined with sunshine, temperature, wind, talks about barometric pressure here, and that is the atmospheric pressure. Some days, you know, I don't know about you, but you feel like you can feel it in your head. You know, that barometric pressure is high. That can change the way we feel, can't it? Precipitation, you know, how much rain there is. Sky cover, you know, how many clouds there are in the sky, what colour there are. There are so many factors within the realms of weather that can affect our mood and how we're feeling. So it's very difficult to say for certain that a particular type of weather will make us feel this way. You can't actually condense it down to being that simple. Let's carry on reading. Those already diagnosed with mood disorders might find themselves more sensitive to these changes. Overall, the sun seems to have the greatest effect. Spending time outdoors in pleasant weather has been shown to improve mental health, energy and focus. Sunlight helps regulate the circadian rhythm, which in turn improves sleep. It also prompts your body to produce vitamin D, which is responsible for healthy bones and muscles. Since the 1980s, Bright light therapy has been used to help patients with depression around the darker seasons to make up for the reduced exposure to natural light. Now, I don't know about you, but I completely agree with this. We generally feel better on a sunny day, particularly here in England. When the sun's out, you kind of wake up feeling like you want to attack the day. You know, you want to go for it. Whereas on a rainy day, you often wake up with the approach that you just want to get through it. There's a big difference, isn't there? And it says here, you know, spending time outdoors in the sun, it improves our mental health. It makes us generally feel more positive and it gives us more energy to go about our day. But also, it says here, you know, the sunlight, when it's out, it gives us more focus. So that sunlight helps to regulate the circadian rhythm, our 24-hour cycle. You know, it's all linked, isn't it? And of course, when we're out in the sun, we produce vitamin D, 
which is responsible for feeling healthier, our bones and our muscles. I thought it was really interesting here that even since the 1980s, bright light therapy has been used to treat and help with depression. Depression is something that many people nowadays deal with, and that is the feeling of, you know, feeling really low and down um, and not really yourself, you know, just feeling quite sad. And unfortunately, dark, gloomy days can assist or can kind of encourage those feelings to come out a little bit more. So apparently they used to use bright light to try and help with those uh, feelings. So it is interesting, isn't it? And I think we would agree with that, that, you know, the sun does make us feel more positive, particularly here in England. But it goes on to say, however, hotter temperatures in summer tend to make us more aggravated and impatient. So a nice sunny day might not always guarantee happiness. In fact, you might welcome a dark and stormy night to cool off. So basically, it's saying that as humans, we're never happy. You know, when it gets too hot, when you, you know, you just need a break from the sun or you've been out in it for too long, often we can get aggravated. And to be aggravated is, um, if you look at the second definition here, it can make us feel, um, you know, just a little bit tense, a little bit annoyed. You know, we're aggravated. We're feeling stressed, frustrated. And to be impatient to be without patience you know when it's really sunny oh, i need to get out of the sun you know so in turn it can also make us feel that way so what do we do to combat that to fight that we go into a dark cold room it's interesting isn't it which is basically never happy so okay generally speaking the sun makes us feel happier makes us feel more energetic but then if it's too much, then we go too far the other way and we feel annoyed, aggravated and stressed. <laughs> Basically, we're just really fussy creatures. Let's carry on reading. Cloudy with a chance of positive thinking. That isn't to say witnessing grey skies may not affect you personally. In fact, our attitudes towards the weather might have more of an effect on us than the weather itself. This is known as weather reactivity. And it is a psychological rather than a direct effect. Sorry, read that again. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go back. This is known as weather reactivity. And it is a psychological rather than a direct effect of the weather. Hmm. That's a really interesting point, isn't it? So actually, a lot of what affects our mood isn't the weather itself. It's our attitude towards the weather as it calls here, weather reactivity. So we're not talking about what the weather is actually actually like. It's our attitude towards that weather and I guess what we expect from it. Let's read on. The ice cream truck is going again. It's killing me, guys. But I'm going to stay here with you. Every, there's a quite a big part of me right now that thinks, should I pause this and go and get an ice cream? But I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stay with you guys. OK, we're going to stay there. Let's go back to the article. One 2011 study for the American Psychological Association's Emotions Journal, God, that's a long title, found that teenagers who were rain haters were indeed less happy on drizzly days, but happier than average on sunny days. Comparatively, summer haters were less fearful and angry on cooler days, but ultimately almost half of the participants weren't affected at all. This would suggest that the weather itself is less important than how we feel about it in the first place. So that kind of undermines everything else that's been said. Basically, it's dependent on how we feel about the weather. Now, it talks about this study on teenagers who were rain haters. I'll say the majority of us don't like the rain. You know, if I had a choice, I would have a sunny day over a rainy day. Wouldn't you? Or is that just me? But then again, you know, there is something lovely, isn't there, about being inside, watching a film on a rainy day. But I guess it comes back to our ultimate preference. But I guess the idea that it's suggesting here is that it's the way that we feel is much more important. The way that we feel about the weather in the first place is what truly affects our mood, not the weather itself. 
goes on to say, to help you feel better, whatever the weather, try reframing your outlook. If you're not a fan of the rain, consider the fact that plants are being watered and see if that helps boost your mood when grey skies approach. Okay, so try and feel better, whatever the weather is. We need to reframe the way we look at the weather. So if you're somebody that doesn't like the rain, basically what this article is saying is that on those rainy days, suck it up and just think of all the good things that are happening because of the rain. I guess that's quite a positive approach, particularly if we are feeling quite gloomy, down or blue about the weather. Flip it on the side and think of any positives that is coming from that weather. It goes on to say, or you may listen to the sound of rain during meditation and associate it with calm and relaxation. As for those who like to hide from the sun, it might be a good idea to appreciate the light from the comfort of the shade rather than staying inside altogether. So if we're somebody that doesn't like the sun, I do like the sun, but I've got to wear a lot of sun cream. But it says here, rather than staying inside, why not go to the shade and try and enjoy being outside, immersing yourself within that sunshine. Another way to help you feel better if cooped up indoors during bad weather is to exercise, as this can help boost your self-esteem and your mood. And if you can do it with other people, even better. Likewise, noting something you like about each season, even if it's not your favourite, could improve your sunny disposition all year round. Of course, as things heat up or cool down, take care to protect yourself and enjoy the weather sensibly. Very nice article there. I like this term that it used, you know, that if you feel like you're being cooped up indoors, if we think of a coop, perhaps we think, Perhaps we think of like a, a chicken coop or something like that, um, you know, where they, they keep them cooped up in a pen. Sometimes we can feel cooped up indoors, can't we? Uh, so, yeah, sometimes we feel cooped up indoors during bad weather. But if that's happening, you know, I feel like oh, I need to go outside, but I can't. I feel like I'm in a chicken coop. I'm, I'm uh, stuck here. I'm trapped exercise and I do agree with this you know if we're feeling like that get exercising there's great videos on YouTube aren't there like even stepping videos where you can just get moving in your living room but in turn this boosts your self-esteem which again will boost your mood so that will make us feel a lot better so basically I think this is quite an interesting article that perhaps the thing that we shouldn't be focusing on so much isn't necessarily the weather itself but it's how we feel about the weather perhaps we need to change our thinking a little bit interesting article there but i do have my thoughts on it i do have my opinions on it i'm going to share them with you i just think generally humans are happier in the sun and a little bit more gloomy when there's gray skies and rain cover for a prolonged period of time periods of time you know if you've had a few sunny days here and there Nothing wrong with grey skies, is there? You know, you get a bit of a mix of both and it's lovely. But I think the problem lies when you've had months upon months of grey skies, rain, drizzly days. That is where it gets to you. And that in turn, I think, is why English people are so happy in summer. Because we're not used to it. So we get these days, like today, where we completely embrace it. We love it. And we take it all in and we enjoy it and we feel happy because it's something different to what we expect. Whereas I, I assume that if you're living in a hot country all the time, or maybe a nice bit colder, rainy, drizzly day would give you that same feeling of contentment. You know, oh, today we get to wrap up. It's a little bit cold outside. Yay. Rather than being swelteringly hot. So perhaps it's just that we like or what makes us happy is a bit of a change. Maybe that's what it is. And that's where my opinion lies. You know, balance is great, but often because of the seasons, we don't get that. So what really makes us happy is the change. And I think that's what really kind of why Brits love summer or the very few sunny days we get is because it's a change. We can have barbecues outside. We can go for a picnic. We can go for a walk with the family. It just changes everything, doesn't it? It changes our mood and how we 
feel. So there you go. That was the podcast today. I tried to do something a little bit different by recording outside. I apologise if some of my sentence structures weren't great. I've got my family walking around in front of me doing stuff, so I occasionally got distracted. And every now and then the sun would shine on my screen and I could not read my notes. So that also made it extremely difficult. So I'm not sure if I will do this again. Let me know in the comments or send me an email to GSLEnglish1 if you enjoyed this. I have thought about doing a podcast walking around the English countryside or even going to London, you know, and just doing a podcast showing you guys around London. So if that's something that you would be interested in, please, please do let me know. My cat's attacking my foot once more, guys. Don't know why. Just decided to attack my foot. Stop it. There you go. Um, but yeah. Very good. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I do appreciate your support on this. I really do. We're starting to get a little bit more traction now on different platforms and I'm loving it. So as long as you guys keep listening and watching, I will keep creating these podcasts for you. But now I'm going to run to that ice cream truck and grab myself an ice cream. I'll see you all very soon. Have a good one, guys.